It seems that when we start talking about real sanctions to basically try and deter Putin from doing something as big as invading Ukraine, I mean, do we really think this could happen under Biden's watch? Well, certainly it's a very high stakes conversation that the US president will be having with Vladimir Putin this evening to try and get him an off ramp from invading Ukraine early next year. Uh, of course, the Russian economy is already incredibly sanctioned. There's not much left on the table, but certainly they can tighten some screws in certain places, particularly in the financial sector. The thing that seems to be up for discussion, but really off the table realistically, is hitting SWIFT, which would cut Russia out of the payment system entirely because that would affect everybody not just Russia, but the US and individuals. So unless that really comes into play, it's hard to see how further bits of sanctions here and there would really get Putin to stand down. So Alex, given what Roz just beautifully explained, how are the markets reacting to the latest news in Moscow? Good, good morning, Francine. Well, yeah, last night we saw a move lower in local stocks, bonds and the ruble, which uh, were actually underperforming their emerging market peers, as you might expect. Um, there was a big drop in Spare Bank, the largest state bank. Uh, that was last night. But currently the ruble is actually trading even a little bit stronger and was leading EM earlier on. Bond yields are flat, essentially little changed. So for now, before those talks, traders are really sitting tight and even slightly dialing back their kind of knee-jerk response to the news. Uh, one thing to watch today is what happens with the announcement of the weekly bond auction for tomorrow. Uh, one of the big banks, BTB, was saying it might actually be uh, cancelled. That's no disaster, of course. It happens at times of turbulence in Russia, and they're not really struggling to raise money. Um, of course, oil prices today are quite strong, and that's helping the local market too. Uh, Roz, what does um, Vladimir Putin actually want from his meeting with Joe Biden today? Well, he likes to actually have the attention as well, because, of course, Russia economically doesn't have that much influence around the world. But Vladimir Putin gets attention by coming in and being a slightly naughty boy in certain parts of the world, really. And for him, Ukraine is a serious deal. U Ukraine, for him, is fundamentally part of Russia. So what he wants is a recognition of his concerns about what he feels is NATO encroaching on his territory, on the western periphery of Russia. He wants some acknowledgement about that. And he probably just wants to also have a proper in-person summit with the U.S. president again next year. So if he can get an agreement from Biden to meet him somewhere, that might be enough for him for now. It's more the carrot, in a way, for, for Putin than the stick, really. Um, Alex, where do we actually go from here? What kind of probability are investors assigning to, to extra sanctions that, as Ross says, maybe don't have the effects, certainly that you know, could be intended? Yeah, well, it, you know, as Russell's saying, it really you know, boils down to the question of how likely you know, investors think it is that Russia would invade. We, we've, we've seen this kind of brinkmanship before. Um, and now, for now, the market signals, not just today but longer term, are actually saying not very likely. In terms of the sanctions themselves, the thing to remember here and to underscore is that what's being discussed, according to these reports, certainly falls under the most severe category of what the U.S. could do. They're much more severe than measures taken so far, which Russia has largely ridden out. Um, there's no question that the kind of thing being proposed would hit Russia hard, uh, despite its efforts to insulate itself against uh, this sort of thing. It could help, uh, it could, sorry, hit the commodity exports, the local debt market, the banking system. Um, and the other thing is, remember, this would go beyond Russia's borders. So the, these penalties were, were the U.S. to apply them. Um, the U.S. would have to be prepared to stomach the potential contagion, uh, the fallout in global commodity and financial markets that might result. Um, whether the U.S. goes that far is a different matter that talks today, of course, the, the key catalyst. Uh, will those talks uh, dispel the, these tensions altogether? Absolutely not. But they could significantly bring down the temperature, and you could even see a bit of a, a relief rally if, uh, if, if they don't deepen. Rosa, are we possibly heading for a war either way? And actually, how, how do you monitor the situation? Is there someone that you're, you know, a, apart from the Kremlin, that you're watching to have an indication of what Russia's intentions are? Well, certainly he's positioning himself that if he wanted to invade Ukraine, he could. As Alex was saying, he's built up his troops on the periphery of Ukraine before and then pulled them back. But certainly the way that he's structuring his assets now enables him potentially to move in quite quickly if he wanted to. And the question is more like, what's his appetite for risk in this? Can he weather the hit to the Russian economy potentially? And what's to stop him militarily? Because certainly NATO nor the US would really want to get involved militarily and pick a direct fight with Russia on that. 
that. And given the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, uh, the U.S. president has only shown that even more intently lately. So he might take a call that if, if there's any moment for him to actually go in and do this, well, why not now? Um, we have a viewer question. It's a loaded question, Roz, but it's basically, is there any potential coordination of Russia with China, i.e. something happens with Taiwan on the Chinese front and, you know, the, the Ukraine invasion from Russia? You would think it's unlikely at this point in time because certainly a war with Taiwan is something that most people would say for the US, for the Chinese president rather, is very unlikely despite the rhetoric that we're seeing. It doesn't make sense for China to get into a war right now over Taiwan, but certainly the message that they're probably both taking from the US is the US is retrenching on foreign policy. Again, Biden has pulled troops out of Afghanistan. He's signaled he's not willing to put US soldiers on the ground yeah. in a protracted conflict anywhere be that Taiwan or be that Ukraine.